Hello lovely makers and welcome back to my channel. I'm Patty. I go by Patty Mac Makes everywhere online and welcome. In today's video I want to share with you how I love to make pillowcases. We are moving into fall. It's finally a little bit chilly here. It's dropped all the way to 70 degrees and that's fall in Virginia Beach. So it got me thinking ah, it's time to freshen up those fall pillowcases and to make some really fun new ones made from flannel. One of my favorite aisles in the Joanne is the snuggle fabric aisle. I love the snuggle fabrics. They're actually made for little kids and babies and that type of stuff, but I'm kind of an overgrown child, so I love them too. Prints are cute, the colors are soothing, and it's just fun to sew with such a sweet fabric. I love making my fall and winter pillowcases from flannel, but I will tell you something, flannel is slightly stretchy. So you wanna be really careful in how you cut it and how you handle it and how you sew it. What I like about so much about this method, which it's my method, <laughs> I came up with it. I sort of, I made a whole lot of different pillowcases that I saw here on YouTube and I uh, sort of mixed and matched my favorite things and I came up with a way to do this that's like three seams and you're done. What I also like is that I was able to include using a French seam. What's so nice about using a French seam is that all of your raw edges are encased. So with this particular pattern, I have made it so that all of the raw seams are encased. So you really have a beautiful finished pillowcase when you're done and it makes a beautiful gift. So we're getting into the time of season. As I'm filming this video, we are moving into that time of season where we're going to start thinking about gift giving and that type of thing. And these little pillowcases are such a cute gift. Tools that you will need to make this pillowcase project are as follows. You'll need a rotary cutter, a cutting mat, fabric scissors, pins, wonder clips, a point turner, thread snips, an iron, and an ironing board. You'll also need a seam gauge. And also under your tools, you will need a sewing machine. For your materials, all you're going to need is fabric and thread. Now, the question you have right now is how much fabric do I need? And I will tell you, it depends. So fabrics are printed in two general methods. Let's just call it that. You have directional prints, you have non-directional prints. And all that means is if you're using a non-directional print, that means you can turn it any which way. It doesn't matter. It, the print looks fine no matter which way you turn it. If you have a directional print, that means it's going in a very specific way. And if you turn it the other way, it's, it's obvious. So let me just show you an example. Okay, this one is clearly a directional print. So you can see, you know, the little woodland animals are going a certain way. And this is the proper orientation. If we turn it this way, that's just not quite right. They're all, they're all on the side. So, when I make a pillowcase, I like to have the print going this way, okay, so that the pillow goes in here and the print is this way so that when I'm sleeping on it, the print is going like that. I don't want it like this. When I put the pillow on my bed, I want to be able to see the, the print as it's supposed to be seen. I don't want it on my bed like that. That, that doesn't seem right to me. All right, let me give you just a little brief story time. A while back, I took a class in Joann's. This is years ago. And it's when I first wanted to get back into sewing and I thought, oh, sewing classes, that'll be fun. So I took this class. It was a disaster, but um, <laughs> one thing, the big thing was I got into, I got into a standoff with the teacher, okay, because I had a directional print. She should have specified non-directional. She did not. So what did I do? I got a directional print because I just seemed to really like those. At the time, I didn't know there was a difference. <laughs> so I show up, I have this directional print. She wants me to cut it so that the hedgehogs are like on their side. And I'm like, well, that's not going to look right on my bed. I don't want my hedgehogs going that way. I want them going the other way. 
you would have thought I'd asked her to turn the water into wine. I mean, it was, it was kind of bad. So I wound up leaving. I didn't finish the project. She really, she blew me off. Okay, she didn't like me at all. <laughs> I was not part of the club. And uh, I left with an unfinished project and uh, not knowing what to do. So I came home and that was my first experience looking up sewing tutorials on YouTube. And the project we were making was the burrito pillow. And I found uh, Crafty Gemini, that's when I first found Vanessa, and I watched her video on how to make the burrito pillow. And the light bulbs went off. And I figured out why some things wouldn't work and I had to go back and get more fabric and da 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 da. Anyway, long story short, <laughs> the direction of the print matters. So if you make this pillowcase using a directional print and you want your, your print going the, you know, this way as the pillows on the bed, you're going to use a little more fabric. And I'm sure people are going to flip out when I show you how to cut the fabric because it's like not exactly the way people are going to recommend you do it. But this is how I do it and it works for me and I'm going to show it to you. Okay, let's go take a look at a couple of the pillows and you can see the cases on the pillows themselves. They're like right over there. So let's take a look. This first pillowcase that we'll look at, this is a very clear example of a directional print. So you've got the little orange tiger cat and it, very clearly this is the way that little tiger cat should be going on the fabric, at least for me. I want when my pillow is sitting on my bed, I want my little print to be like this. So you can see here's where the pillow goes in and the, uh, the print is going in the correct orientation. This is a non-directional. So for one like this, you know, it doesn't matter. It can go any, any way, forward or back. It's not going to impact the way the finished project is going to look on the bed. So non-directional, you're going to only need one yard. And for the directional, you're going to need a yard and a quarter. All right, so let's look at how to put these together. The measurement of the fabric is 36 by 42. Now, <laughs> when we cut it, because we're cutting on a fold, it's 36 by 21. But when you open it up, that 21 becomes 42. If you're using the non-directional print, that is the easiest one to cut. You're going to simply fold the fabric, salvage to salvage, put it on your mat and cut a 36 inch width. So it's like a true one yard. A tip I have for you when you're buying the fabric is to buy a little bit more than the yard because it's never going to be straight coming off of the bolt. You're going to have waste where you need to even it up, get it squared up and also Flannel tends to shrink and you definitely want to pre-wash and dry the pillowcase in the same way that you would wash and dry it once you use it. So get all the shrinkage out of the way in the beginning, press it out, and then go back to your width of fabric. And we're just going to make one cut right here. Now I have the directional print on the cutting mat and uh, you can see I've had to fold it a, a different way. So I have my print going the way that I want it to go. Move it down so you can see. On this end, so I've put my selvages together at this end and my selvages together at the far end. And what I'm going to do is to align the fold along with the straight edge and then I'm going to go ahead and, and cut it. And you could either measure it out on your cutting mat or what I have done is I've cut my own paper pattern using brown paper and I will then just lay that on top of the print and then I know I'm getting it where it needs to be. So uh, let's just take a look at how to give that cut put a little bit of a weight on there. So in essence, you're just drafting your own pattern. And what I wind up using is this brown paper 
normally you get this to wrap packages um, for UPS or whatever. So I just get this and I make a lot of my own little like bag patterns and that type of thing from this paper. So I'm going to go ahead and just give this a cut and we'll see what it looks like. And there's your fabric and it looks huge. <laughs> it looks absolutely huge and I guess it is but I like an oversized pillowcase and I think it works well. Now that our fabric is cut the first thing we will do is to open it wide and on the longest side which will be the 42 inch side the first step is to press in a one quarter inch fold. This is basically to encase the raw edge in the hem. So the first step is to press in that quarter inch fold. We'll come back and we will press in a four and a half inch fold. And this gives you the beautiful hemmed edge on your pillowcase. Once you have that pressed in all the way across, use your pins to pin that fabric into place. Once you're pinned, we will edge stitch this hem into place. Once you have the hem in place on that long edge, you're going to fold the pillowcase in half with the folded edge at one end. You're going to fold it so that the right side is out, so the wrong sides are facing. This will feel completely wrong, but this is what we're going to do. The reason we're doing it this way is because we are setting up to do our French seam. So once you have your pillowcase nice and even and all of your edges are matching, we're going to take our wonder clips or you can use your pins again and secure all the way around. Once you have everything secured, take the pillowcase back to your sewing machine. You're going to use a zigzag stitch, which is a stretchy stitch. I put mine on the number four stitch and selected a number two stitch length. I then used a 3 8 inch seam allowance all the way around. This is the part where you're gonna feel like you've messed up, but you haven't messed up. <laughs> I just feels really wrong to stitch with the right sides out, but you have to trust the process, trust the plan. So this is what it's gonna look like. You're gonna do your zigzag stitch and you're going to go all the way around on the two edges with the raw edge, okay? And you can see I've clipped my corner there. And then we'll come down to here. And then here's the, the fold. Okay, so now what we're going to do is turn this wrong side yeah wrong side out. I have to think about it wrong side out we're gonna poke out the corners and then we will take this back to the sewing machine and stitch our last seam turn the pillowcase now wrong side out 
use the point turner to very carefully poke out your corners so that they're nice and sharp and use the other side of it to open the seams completely. Press this into place. Now we're going to very carefully do our last seam. What you want to do is to stay to the left hand side of that first seam allowance. I use the same zigzag stitch set to four with a stitch length of two and I just went all the way around the outer perimeter on the stitched side. Once you've got that seam done, you clip your thread tails and turn your project right side out. Use the point turner to push out the corners and open the seams and press it into place. And that's it. You've got your pillowcase ready to go. Isn't that a great project? I love these pillowcases. If you have somebody in your life who is expressing an interest in sewing, this pillowcase is a great first project. It'll get them used to cutting to exact measurements. It will get them accustomed to monitoring their seams. You can go off a little bit with the straightness of your seam. It's not the end of the world. So again, perfect projects for somebody new to sewing. Also, if you just really like handling and looking at snuggle fabric, <laughs> it's great for that. <laughs> okay, that's today's pillowcase project. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you will make a whole kit and caboodle of these for the holiday season and for the winter and that you share them with your friends, your family, your neighbors. I think we're all going to need a little extra cheering up this winter and these little snuggle fabric pillowcases are a wonderful way to brighten anybody's day. Okay that is today's video. I appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye.